The Bugatti Veyron was the first car to break the 400 km per hour benchmark, or the 248 mile per hour benchmark. Much of that ability is because of its aerodynamics, which switches between three different modes depending on how fast you're going, moving aero devices up and down, and even itself. So you have slow, medium, and fast modes. But why does it need these different modes? What's the difference between these? And what happens when you use the fastest mode in a slower speed? To find out, we have the Veyron model here in its slower speed, where the rear spoiler is completely retracted and the car is at its normal ride height. We then have the same model, but now with the rear spoiler deployed, this is the fastest mode position and the car is lowered to 70mm off the ground at the rear and 65 at the front. We simulated the slow mode at 72 kph, which is a typical cruising speed around town with the windows down. Then when the Veyron is at 72 kph, but then in the fast mode, and then when the Veyron is at 400 kph, or 248 miles per hour, in the fast mode too, to see what the difference was between 72 kph and 400. We calculated the drag and downforce, as well as the flow fields around the car. Even in the slow mode, the Veyron is incredibly aerodynamic. I mean, it isn't shaped like a bullet, there are bits and pieces sticking out, but still in the center plane, we can see the flow traveling over it is mostly well behaved. We have the cooling flows modeled, and still the front is a little too blocky. That comes with some flow deceleration and high pressure. That does create some drag, but one super impressive part is the front hood, and then how it blends into the windshield. This car is 20 years old, and even a lot of supercars these days don't do this region that well. Unlike those cars, because the hood is still sloped here, and the windshield is at a very similar angle, when the flow goes over this region, there is some deceleration, but the high pressure you get is minimal. So the drag that most other cars get here is greatly reduced. Under the front, the flow is unbelievably good because even though it might not seem like anything, there is a sharp angle at the front, and for pretty much every other car out there, that sharp edge makes the flow separate just underneath, which adds a little more drag. But for the Veyron, we don't get any separation here at all, at least from what I can tell. The thing that stands out to me is maybe because the nose very slightly bends up. It's not so much, but maybe it's enough to keep the flow attached here. As a result, we still get good low pressure here because the flow has accelerated and there is now good downforce but we don't get the associated drag penalty with this low pressure. Now, one problem that still persists with the Veyron that pretty much every other car has too, is the roof produces massive low pressure. That creates lift and makes the car unstable at high speeds. And that is partly why this slow speed mode can't be used at high speeds. As it currently stands, there isn't enough downforce to keep it safe when you go fast and hence why when you accelerate, other bits have to pop up or down. One way to get rid of that roof problem is at its root cause and it's to make the car longer at the front. You can then slope the roof more and overcome the low pressure. But while that is great for its aerodynamics, it also makes the car less agile because you have more weight out in front and going around corners then becomes slower. Pretty much the entire rear is super impressive though, of the car I mean, because Bugatti fled the boot up a little to reduce the low pressure over the back. And sure, we still do get low pressure here, but it isn't as bad as it would be if the boot were pinched so we don't get as much lift here with this geometry. The problem that then arises is that you usually get a larger wake, but here you can still see just how small the wake is. The Veyron solved this problem by putting a pretty aggressive diffuser at the back so the flow gets kicked up quite a lot as you can see. That not only reduces the wake size and hence the drag, but also increases the downforce too. So it is a two-way swing happening here. And actually, given how small the wake is, when we come to the drag coefficient, you struggle to believe what it is and this plane is from on top and it cuts through just above the engine bay. Now this is one region that I really don't understand why Bugatti made the car like this. You can see that this cutout region has a massive wake and I don't know, maybe they did it like this to help with engine cooling. But either way, this is a very draggy region and could be improved quite easily by just covering it with a smooth plate, even if it's like glass, like a lot of supercars. The rest of the top is very good with the only other wake producing regions being the side mirrors. All these simulations were done with OF, open foam I mean, not only fans. And if you want to learn how to do this, then take our course here, for open foam, not only fans. And we have a great Christmas special on at the moment that I think you'll really like. So these drag ISO surfaces show that the drag from the front wheels is incredibly small. It may seem like a lot is coming off of them, but this amount is way less than most cars, including other supercars and hypercars. The way Bugatti did this was by making the wheels very large to occupy the wheel houses as much as possible. If they wanted to, they could even reduce the drag more by covering the rims because they have quite open ones by default, and that is to increase the cooling flow to the brakes so you can stop safely. If you were to cover them, then you could go quicker, 
but then you might not survive, so it's up to you. In a slow mode, it has a surprisingly high drag option of 0.41, which is unexpected because of how streamlined it was in the center plane, but because the engine bay is exposed, that drag jumps up. And when looking at the amount of lift produced, we now get a good idea as to why you can't drive the Veyron at high speeds in a slow mode. It produces lift and at 250 miles per hour, any slight instability can blow out of control quite quickly. So how about the fast mode then? In this fast mode, the rear spoiler is just poking up a little bit, and I wonder if that would really make that much of a difference. It flows the same 72 kph as when in the slow mode, and comparing the center plane plot of this velocity and streamlines, in the fast mode, almost the entire car's flow is the same as the slow mode, except when you get to the back. The flow over the diffuser looks pretty similar, but around the rear spoiler, there is now not only a much larger wake, but also the flow is directed up a lot more. You also get quite decent high pressure over the top, pushing the rear of the car into the ground, and the underneath is giving low pressure too, which helps increase downforce. So it's looking good from this pressure plot. Now, on top is the same plane going over the engine bay, and we get very strong clues as to why in the medium mode, the spoiler is up much higher. So in this fast mode, the spoiler is very low, and so it is actually acting in the wake of the engine bay, which reduces its effectiveness. So in the medium mode, by jacking it up, you get into this cleaner flow, and it increases its downforce and efficiency. From these drag isosurfaces, the wake is now much worse, and the wing is definitely producing more drag. However, despite these isosurfaces being worse around the rear, the drag option drops to 0.38. Why? It has a lot to do with the fact that the car is now lower to the ground, and doing that pretty much improves the drag of the car. One major reason is that the wheels are now more covered, and wheels produce about 25% of a passenger car's drag. Improving them helps reduce that drag quite a lot. For the lift, that little spoiler in bad flow, along with the lower ride height, reduced the lift to the point where about 10 kilos of downforce are now produced, so the lift was all eradicated from before. Now that was using the fast mode at slow speeds, something the Veyron isn't designed for. It still worked well, however the lower ground clearance would be difficult on regular roads. So what would happen when you use this fast mode at the speed it was designed to, at 248 mph? This is the exact same geometry now, but now at 400 kph. And the aerodynamics is pretty much identical except the velocity is much higher now and the pressure span a greater range. The rear spoiler still does a pretty good job kicking the flow up and the diffuser accelerates the flow a lot which greatly reduces the pressure and increases the downforce. Considering just how fast the flow is, the wake isn't that large. Surprisingly, the drag option is the same at 400 kph as it was at 72, coming in at 0.38. And it shows just how effective lowering the car is at reducing the drag option because the rear wing is producing significantly more wake and hence drag. And the lift comes in at an easy minus 323 kilos, which greatly increases the stability of the car at such high speeds. And I guess the only reason why you don't run the top speed mode at low speeds is because of ground clearance. Because if you were to run that, you'd drop the drag option as well. So if you're staying on YouTube, YouTube thinks you'd like this video, so check it out. Peace and amigos.